Hi there. Um, following on from my absolute disastrous attempt at um, Between Centre Boring in my last video, um, I'm overwhelmed by the uh, number of comments and suggestions I received uh, regarding what the problem might, might have been. And uh, I also received some advice from uh, Mr Crispin's ex-tutor, uh, which was really good. And uh, anyway, after a bit of investigation, I think I've found out what the root cause is. And I think it's this live centre. Um, you can actually feel a little bit of play here. It's got interchangeable heads on a taper. Now I don't know whether the bearing's gone or the taper's dodgy, uh, but you can certainly feel movement on that. So I think that is the root cause. Um, but what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna have another go at between centre boring. Um, I'm going to replace that with a, a proper engineer's live centre because that's from my woodworking lathe. And um, I'm also going to apply probably about half a dozen of the other suggestions that I received. So fingers crossed this time it'll all work out well. Okay, so uh, the modifications I've made around the cross slide include a pair of larger V-blocks which provide extra support on the sides of the cylinder liner. Um, these also only require 9 thou of shim to bring the centre um, in line with the lathe centre. Um, I've put some locking nuts at the bottom of these studs. Um, I've distributed the clamping pressure by making some um, sort of timber to sit around the top of the cylinder liner so that's distributing the pressure right round. Now prior to my last attempt at uh, trying to do between centre boring I'd added um, a locking screw to the cross slide so that locks onto the uh, gib. Now uh, as a belt and braces approach I've decided to add another one here so that ensures that the uh, cross slide is rock solid on the carriage uh, when we're machining. So all this is really, you know, no movement in it whatsoever. And I've also checked the uh, gibs on the um, carriage and they're, they're fine. So there's no movement there at all. So I've lined everything up as uh, I did in my previous video. And I'm just gonna check that it's centered uh, using this coaxial indicator. So there's very little fluctuation there. We'll go to the other end. Slightly more, but nothing in it really. So I'm happy that uh, that is all nice and centered. Okay, so at the headstock end, I've decided to take on board the suggestion to uh, use a dead center. Um, now this is a three morse taper dead center and to provide some extra support for the boring bar I'm going to use this four jaw chuck and my four jaw chuck has just got the center big enough to go over that. So when I put the boring bar in I'll, I'll engage it with the dead center and then I'll provide some extra support by just nipping these jaws up. Now some people suggested making a shorter bar, which, which I did, um, but having placed it in the chuck I found there's not enough room between where the cutter is and uh, the chuck end. Um, so I think I'm going to go back to my original plan and stick with the original length. And um, I also got quite a few comments about cutter profile and um, some people suggested a sort of sharp tip others suggested a round tip so to be honest I've gone somewhere between and come up with that profile when you can see that so the cutter will go like that in that direction so fingers crossed that should be okay
well that comes in at 1.0585 well my uh, life centre arrived in the post and uh, I got it from Amadeal for only £22 and it looks pretty good for, the, for that price anyway um, I've uh, tightened the tailstock up and uh, having tightened it up um, I now need to just uh, nip up the jaws of the four jaw chuck. Okay so I've uh, nipped the jaws up on the four jaw chuck and that's pretty much spot on so I'm happy with that. Okay now somebody suggested um, that it might be an idea to put the um, adjusting mechanism on the right hand side of the tool um, in order to avoid having to move the bar now it, it seems like uh, a good idea um, obviously you've got to pull the tailstock back put the adjusting thing on here and I'd, I've advanced the tool by about two thou so if I take this off now the problem is the tool is sticking out wider than the in inside diameter of the sleeve so the only way around this, I think, is what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to loosen two of the jaws off on the four-jaw chuck so I can just tilt the cutter out of the way with the tailstock not, not attached. Then I can move the carriage that way and then get the cutter at this side of the bore. Then, having done that, I can then uh, bring the tailstock back up uh, tighten up the jaws again, put the gauge on, make sure it's spot on zero and then make the cut. But I'll do all that off camera uh, until I'm ready to make the cut. Okay so we're ready to uh, make a cut here. I'm going to use the fine feed on the carriage. I've not changed any of the gear ratios so it'll be the normal fine feed and uh, we'll give it a try. 300 rpm we're going to go at. Sounds a lot better than last time, no chatter there. Well that looks promising, really happy with the way that sounded. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take the tailstock away, I'm going to move the carriage down here, check the internal dimension and um, then adjust the cutter again as I did before and then repeat the process until I can get it to a size for a, an eye trial uh, o-ring. Um, bearing in mind this is the part that I thought was going to be scrapped, this sleeve, so it would be great if I could actually get it up to a dimension that's usable. Okay so I've advanced the cutter by about two thou and then we'll give it another try. So this is the final cut, I've just moved the cutter out by 2 thou and this should get the internal bore up to 1.074 of an inch. So that's 74 thou over 
but that's the size of um, a nitrile o-ring um, so I think I'll be okay with this well I must say I'm really happy with the way that's turned out um, it was a totally different experience from the one I had the other day and the diameter internal diameter is consistent throughout it's spot on albeit it's 74th hour over what it should be but I don't think that will be a problem and uh, it's really really nice and smooth inside now I did um, buy a piece of cast iron just in case I, I need it to make another one but I, I don't think I do I think I, I think that'll be fine and uh, this uh, little micrometer thing that you put on the uh, boring bar works a treat once once you've identified how much more you need to cut by you know you put that on top of the cutter and adjust it and away you go that was really accurate um, and also it's worth mentioning um, James um, Chaff I think that's how you pronounce his surname James came up with a really good idea um, if you don't want to be bogged down with between centre boring, um, buy yourself some cold drawn se seamless steel tube, CDS they call it. And that's it, I bought some out of curiosity. And I tell you what, the internal diameter of that is just consistent throughout. They do all different sizes and um, it's smooth as anything. So, you know, all you need to do is machine the outside and get the length right and uh, away you go. And I bought a, a long length of that. Not sure what I'll do with it, but you know, it might come in handy. <laughs> so I can't thank everybody enough for all the help and support and advice. I'm over the moon with the results. And uh, I think it's one of those things um, when you um, nail all the little bits and pieces, uh, it all comes together. And uh, I'm really glad I nailed between centre boring. So um, I hope you like the result and uh, I hope to see you later. <laughs>